Okay, we're going to look at the binomial distribution. First thing is the conditions for the binomial distribution. This is worth learning these quite often in an exam. They'd ask you what are the conditions for the binomial distribution or the conditions for an alert distribution. So the first one is you've got a finite number of trials. So that's maybe uh, somebody goes into a shop, 10 people go into a shop, uh, and then you're asking about how many people, uh, do they buy something or do they not buy something? So uh, 10 is the number of trials as you have 10 people going into the shop. Or maybe it's a, a probability of a goal being scored in the matches such and such. If 10 matches are played, so your N is 10, you've got 10 matches played. The trials are independent. So the, if we look back at our shop example, if somebody goes in this shop and they buy something that has no impact on somebody else buying it something. And the outcome of each trial is denamed, uh, deemed a success or failure. So you've got, um, uh, you buy something or you don't buy, success or failure. Uh, the probability of a successful outcome is the same for each trial. Okay, the formula for this looks very tricky, but it is not really at all. Uh, we'll just go through what it is. So first thing you've got to do is say what this bit actually means. This means x is, dis x is distributed, the binomial distribution. There are n trials, and p is a probability of success. So x is distributed, binomial distribution. There are n trials and p is a probability of success or x is distributed uh, b i n and then m n trials and p successes okay if your probability of success if your probability of success is p then q is a probability of failure so say for example p was equal to 0.3 probability of success of 0.3 q would be equal to you either succeed or you fail so it's one minus the p so it's 0.7. Okay, so q is equal to 1 minus p. Uh, right, what this means here then, p brackets x equals r. This means the probability that there are r successes and it is equal to ncr. So that's on your calculator using your, it's on the Casio, it uh, has traditionally been on the divide button. So how you do that, you do the depth. Uh, NCR, you do like uh, say for example you want to define, just write that up here, 10 uh, C5. Uh, 10 C5, you would do 10 and then shift and your divide button and then 5 and press equals and 10 C5 when you do it is 252. So that's really how you're getting that. So uh, here your, that's your probability of success is equal to sorry probability of our successes is equal to ncr times p your success probability to the power of r times q to the power of n minus r okay right we're going to look at an example and see how this works it, it is much easier once you get on to an actual example okay and this example says in a shop 50 percent people pay by check find the probability that in a random sample of eight customers exactly to pay by check. So the first thing we need to do before we get doing, doing anything at all is we say how this thing is distributed. So X is distributed with the binomial distribution. There are eight customers. So your N is equal to eight. The probability of success is 0.15. Okay, I'm just gonna write all of that down, the information I have, N is equal to eight. My P is equal to 0.15. And I'm writing that down so it's easier for me to see what my Q is. Q, remember, is 1 minus P. So it's going to be 0.85. What we want to find in part A, we want to find the probability that there are, are how many successes? Two people pay by check. So probability X is equal to 2. So uh, it is NCR, so 8C2 times my P, which is 0.15 to the power of p to the power of r which is 2 and then my q to the power of n minus r so n minus r is going to be the 8 minus the 2 so it's going to be 6. Another way to think about this is that this number here the 2 and the 6 they always have to add up always have to add up to your uh, your overall n and that's it. Okay, so we just go through that. You fire that into your calculator and you get 0.238 and that's to three sig figs. 
Okay, right, another way we can do this, we can do this using the calculator. So on the calculator, uh, you hit mode, and then you go to seven, and then you go to binomial PD, and then you go to variable. There's another option list, but we'll just use variable. And what you've then got three options is X, M, and P. So your M is that easy, it was just we had uh, eight things, eight trials, I suppose, or eight customers, whatever it happened to be. So eight, your probability of success is 0.15. And your M is basically equivalent to this R. So, so your X is equivalent to the R, so it's 2. So you hit X equals 2, N equals 8, uh, P is equal to 0.15. You press equals and your answer then. So probability that X is equal to 2 is equal to 0 0.28, 0 0.238, sorry. Uh, 0.238 to 3 sig figs. Okay. Okay, next part of the question asks us to find probably that more than 6 pay by check. Let's just write down what we had before. We had uh, that x was distributed binomial distribution uh, 8 and 0.15. So we want to find in this case, we want to find the probability that x is uh, greater than 6. So that really, the only options you can have are x equals 7 or x equal 8. So we just have to go through those. So x equals 7 means 8c7 times my p, which was 0.15 to the power of 7, times my q, which was 0.85 to the power of 1. And my probability x equals 8 is 8c8 eight eight times my 0.15 to the power of 8 times my 0.85 to the power of 0. Now you may remember from doing binomial from your AS1 that 8c8 eight eight is just 1 and obviously 0.85 to the power of 0 is just 1. So really you could have just written down for your probability x equals 8 if you just written down 0.15 to the power of 8, but it's fine. It's not taking an awful lot of time to do. Uh, it's fine. When you work those both out, and you can hit that all into your calculator in one line, and I got 1.19 times 10 to the minus 5, and that was to the power two, three significant figures. Okay, we're going to look now at how we could do this uh, on the calculator as well. Okay, we're looking at the calculator. So on the calculator, hit mode and seven. I guess so you do your statistics uh, mode. So hit uh, mode seven, and then you will need to scroll down more on most calculators to get to binomial CD. Now, this is the cumulative distribution function for binomial. It's a wee bit different than what we had in the previous one. So binomial CD, and then again hit uh, variable. So let's avoid the, uh, the list one for the time being. So we just go to variable variable again. Okay, right. What this does is gives you the binomial CD gives you the probability that X is less than or equal to a particular value. That's what it gives you. So we're looking for, in our example, we're looking for the probability that X is greater than six. So we can't really use this thing uh, directly. So we have to look at this as probability X is less than or equal to x is greater than 6 is 1 minus probability x is less than or equal to 6. So on our calculator, we can find probability x is less than or equal to 6, and then we'll have to store that answer. So how you do that, again, you've got in the variable. Our uh, x value is 6 then. So you put x equal to 6. Your n value was 8, and your probability of success was 0.15. And all of those three things, so just again, x was equal to 6, n was equal to 8 and p is equal to 0.15, press equals, and you get a horrible looking number. You get 0.9999881253. Now you could write it out the whole way that I have done here, and then just take it away from one, go back into the just calculation mode in your calculator, and take it away from one, or the smarter way to do it is to hit store, st, sto, and then A, so that is now, and it should come up in your calculator stored to A, okay? Now what you need to do is exit out of your statistics mode, so hit menu, 
and then one you're now back to your calculation mode so i'm just going to say here what i've done is i've stored to a and i run out of a bit of space and what we're going to do then uh i'll move up here this is a bit of a mess apologies and then you're just going to do one minus your a is going to be equal to your answer so one minus alpha and then a to get your a thing and you can see it comes up 0.187472656 times 10 to the minus 5. So it is equal to 1.19 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so that was a wee bit of a mess there, but hopefully you understood what, what I was doing there. Okay, this example says a box contains a large number of pens. The probability of a pen is a probability of a pen is filled is 0.1. How many pens would you need to select to be more than 95% certain of picking at least one filthy pen? So, uh, in this one, uh, X, first of all, is distributed as binomial distribution. You have N pens, don't know how many, but the probability of picking a filthy one is 0.1. So we want to find the probability that X is greater than or equal to 1, so that's at least 1. And we want to find that. So the probability of x is greater than or equal to 1 is anything except x is equal to 0. So here we're just going to write out the, uh, what a, the probability for x being equal to 0 would be. It would be nc0 times 0.1 to the power of 0 times 0.9 to the power of n. So that is the same as 1 minus nc0 is just 1. 0.9 to the power, sorry, 0.1 to the power of 0 is also going to be 1. So it's just 1 times 1 times 0.9 to the power of n, which is just 0.9 to the power of n. Right. Let's think about what the question asks us again. It said we wanted to find uh, how many pens we needed to have so that we were certain that at least one faulty was greater than, that should be, sorry, uh, was greater than or equal to. 0.95. So we now know what probability x is greater than or equal to 1 is. It was 1 minus 0.9 to the power of n is greater than or equal to 0.95. It's a, we've a wee bit of rearranging to do here. I'm going to move my, uh, swap my 0.95, bring it across the left hand side. So you'll have 1 minus 0.95, which will be 0.05. And I'll bring my minus 0.9 to the power of n across. So that's 0.9 to the power of n. Okay. Now this is what this bit in bold is saying here. So these two lines here, it says dividing an inequality by a negative, uh, a negative uh, or log of a less log of less than one will result in the inequality sign changing direction. So we'll see, we'll see this happening in a wee minute. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to take logs. So taking logs of both sides, so I'm going to have log of point not five is greater than or equal to, and that's going to be n log of 0.9. I'll just go up here to finish this off. And then what we're going to do is log of 0.05, then is greater than or equal to n, and I've divided across by my log of 0.9. Now, if I had continued on with that, I would have got that wrong because what I've actually, what this thing, uh, log of 0.9, is actually a negative number. Just check out in your calculator, hit in, hit log 0.9, and you'll see you get a negative number. So you've divided across by a negative, so this inequality sign here needs to change direction. So uh, we'll get rid of that. And I'll put that in red so, so we can see that that is important, that that has changed direction. And then we're good to go on for the rest of this question. So I'll just write that out again. Uh, my arrow was pointing to my logs. Oh, I was in blue. My arrow was pointing to my logs. So n is still pointing to over to the log. So log of 0 0.05 divided by log of 0.9. So that means n is greater than or equal to, and you hit that into your calculator, and I got 28.43. Dot dot dot. Some other not digits there. Doesn't really matter. So my answer. M is equal to 29. So it's a whole number of pens. So 
n is equal to 29 is the least amount of hens that you would need. Okay, folks, you're now ready to do, uh, it's page 27, exercise 6b, and yep, that's it. Okay, thank you.